I've got to admit, I was really pleasantly surprised here. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated video tours about resorts and flights all over the world. This is my 97th video and today we're at the misty and lush Alila Ubud, one of the first ever Alila properties. I hope you'll stick around for this beautiful tour. Welcome to Ubud. Without a proper highway, we're around a 90 minute drive north of the airport as we make our way to the Alila Ubud, which is a further 10 minute drive beyond the town. But I assure you, it's worth the drive. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay, as well as my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. Alila is a brand that you might not be familiar with yet, Aside from their three incredible California properties, they're a distinctly South Asian brand, with their roots in Indonesia. It may come as a surprise to you that Alila in Sanskrit means surprise. Surely not a surprise though is how much a thumbs up and subscribe would mean to me, only of course if you like the video that is. If you're not a fan of this gorgeous jungle paradise, feel free to click the thumbs down button, but please do it two times. For those of you that would like to take this a step further, there are details about my very new Patreon in the description below. As always, I'm relatively new in the YouTube game and always looking for ways to improve my content. So I'm all ears for any suggestions that you might like to leave in the comments below. In advance, a very genuine thank you for all that you do. As we walk up to the open air reception area, let me just tell you a tiny bit about this property and about the brand and how they came to be owned by Hyatt. In the early 90s, there was a hotel development company called General Hotel Management. The chairman of this group was Adrian Zecha, the founder of both Amman Resorts and the Azurai Resorts. GHM in 1996 opened the Chedi Ubud, which is now known as the Alila that we're at today. In 2001, the Alila brand was founded by American banker Mark Adelson, who also worked hand in hand with Zecha and Amman Hotels. Soon after forming his own brand, he acquired the Chedi Ubud and brought it under the Alila umbrella. In 2014, Alila merged with Thompson Hotels and JDV to form Two Roads Hospitality, which was then eventually bought by Hyatt in 2018. Still with me? Good. Here we're in the on-site library, which is just around the corner from the reception area. Of course, there have been updates throughout the years, but as we look around, let's just remember that this property is 26 years old and is still presenting as a very up-to-date and chill resort in the jungle. More specifically, we're in the southern part of the northern part of the island, if that makes any sense at all. One thing I've grown to love about Google Earth, for properties like this specifically, is that you can see exactly how they're situated and laid out relative to the mountains and the valleys around it. Possibly Ubud's most well-known infinity pool, it is one that shows well no matter what the weather is. In fact, the entire 74-room property is one that you'll feel comfortable in no matter if the sun is shining or the rain is falling, as it did during much of my stay in Ubud. Just in front of the pool is the first of two restaurants, which are laid out one on top of the other. First here, we have the Cabana Kitchen, which is a popular spot on sunny pool days and serves up what I think we can call California Indo Fusion Fair. And in general, the resort has very reasonable prices for both food and drink.
Let me explain why I was pleasantly surprised and what I was a little bit worried about leading up to my stay. I knew a bit about the history of the hotel, but having been under Hyatt's management for just about four years now, I was concerned it was going to pick up on too many corporate cues and lose a bit of what had made it such success for the past 30 years. I'm very happy to report I saw none of that. The resort is laid out nicely in the fashion of a traditional Balinese village with all of the communal areas clustered together and then the rooms and villas spread out throughout the property. I think the resort maintains a great independent spirit and honestly I love it on dark and gloomy days. The lush surroundings and dark finishes have a way of matching the mood of the day beautifully. We're going to take a look at the primary restaurant ahead of us in a little bit, but first, let's take a look around the spa area, which sits just above and behind where we are now. The spa is laid out in separate small structures that house the reception area, the waiting area, and the treatment rooms respectively. Further up the long driveway on the way to my room, there's an organic garden and my first glimpses of sunshine. Alright, let's head to my room for this day. I booked a standard deluxe room, but upon check-in was upgraded to this spectacular Forest Edge Villa, which really became the highlight of the resort for me, easily making it the top 5 rooms that I've stayed in this year. This outdoor space, open on three sides and with a convenient fan overhead, was a wonderful space to spend time in the afternoons and evenings on. There were consistent breezes, and it's just really your own little private nook down here. Walking inside, it's one of those rooms that is just so warm and inviting. 
understated and neutral with various earth tones throughout, provide exactly the kind of room that you'd wish for in Ubud. A peaceful oasis in the forest. What more do you need? The canopy king bed is flanked by large wooden end tables and sits in front of a paneled wall, which provides plenty of contrast for the off-white walls throughout. The room has plenty of outlets and had a few snacks on arrival, including a fruit bowl with my favorite fruit on earth, snake fruit, as well as shrimp crackers and sambal. And it's a, it's a small thing that we don't think about that much, but I really did enjoy seeing the staff carrying around trays with these goodies on them to outfit the new rooms. As in, they're all placed freshly in the room and not just refilled. There's a large daybed surrounded by windows, allowing in plenty of natural light even on gloomy days. With this stool in front of the TV table, I do believe that means that there are actually three desks in here. If you know me, you know that that makes me very happy. In the next room, which can be closed off with pocket doors, you'll find the open design closet on the left, sporting some very nice design touches, such as the straps lining the baggage area to protect the wood, the leather lining that draws throughout the room, and a safe that is not only big enough for just about everything you need, but is also completely lined in felt, not just a single layer on the bottom. It's the small touches like this that I found that set the property apart. The mini bar, with an empty refrigerator, was stocked with glass bottled purified water and a coffee pod machine with some lovely Tanamera coffee. Moving on to the bathroom, we have what might be my favorite table that I've ever seen in a bathroom, filled with fresh flowers, which are ever so delicately scenting the room. The bathroom is serene, with beautiful local textiles on the walls and a large soaking tub in the picture window. The shower and toilet room were both a bit oversized and just rounded out an all-around fantastic room. Heading down to dinner now at the inviting pavilion above the infinity pool. Feel free to pause to see the menu and take a closer look.
My dinner was okay. The meal started with some more shrimp crackers, and then I chose the sticky rice lemper, followed by beef rendang, one of my all-time favorite dishes. The lemper was good, if not a bit bland. The beef, though, was dry, and the rice had clearly been microwaved at the last second and was just overcooked. More than edible, but just a bit disappointing considering how lovely the rest of the resort had been so far. Rooms were nicely turned down while at dinner, and I had a wonderfully peaceful sleep as it rained all night long. The next morning, it was time to walk to breakfast, and while I did put it off for around 20 minutes, trying to will the rain to stop, it just wasn't happening. So, off we went with the umbrella and a few surprises along the way. If you remember the opening shots of driving down the long driveway, my room is on the upper part of that driveway, around a 5-7 to seven minute walk to the common areas. Though, buggies are of course available if you'd like. Not that I make my way to tropical forests all that often, but this was certainly the first one that I'd been to since COVID, and it was just nice to be here. I cannot say enough about how beautiful, wild, and lush the surroundings are. Speaking of wild things, so, I think I'm generally someone that's comfortable admitting what they're not that knowledgeable about. One of those things? Monkey etiquette. What do you do? I thought they were like big squirrels with opposable thumbs and would just run away. Nope. Did you know that smiling at a macaque can be seen as a threat? Yeah, me neither. So please enjoy the next minute or so of my approximate inner dialogue. I've read some possibly fake, it's the internet and all, horror stories about macaques stealing stuff and jumping on people in the monkey forest, which is pretty close by. And while my first priority was just not pissing off that male, I was also trying to move slowly in a way that my phone and gimbal didn't look like something that they could run up and grab. It was certainly a jolt in the morning. Anyway, on to breakfast. The concept here is unique in that it's all small a la carte dishes and the menu changes depending on the day of the week. All dishes are small portions and you're encouraged to order three or four items. I had a poached egg with curry hollandaise, a local sweet potato rice dish, and a bread basket with some homemade jams. It was a mixed bag. The egg and curry hollandaise is delicious, but the baguette felt like a cheap version of a Vietnamese baguette. The rice dish was okay, but lacked a bit of punch that I was expecting. By no means nothing bad, but nothing great either.
The sun did come out, though, for like eight minutes, which, at least for me, was enough time to get the thumbnail that I had been waiting for. Final stop on today's tour is the wellness and living area, which had a boutique that did seem a bit out of place, and a decent sized gym considering the small size of the resort. So, what are we thinking? I loved it here. I think that lucky upgrade was part of the reason, but given the fit and finishes of the room, I'm pretty confident that I would have been satisfied in just about any of their rooms. Improvements could be made to the food program, but absolutely not a deal breaker. Alright, time for the flip-flop score. Feel free to pause to take a closer look if you'd like. For those of you that have reached this point, click the thumbs up button, or subscribe because of this video, a very genuine thank you. I hope to see you on Friday at the Intercontinental Jimberon, Bali.